everybody. Welcome to So I've Been Told. This is episode 5. I'm the host, Adam Kramer. And today I talked to my friend Mackenzie Harris. She's been playing music here in Rochester for the last couple of years under the name Rose Hip. And she's going to play two songs at the end of her interview. One is called Quilt, the other is called Mr. Blister. And yeah. It's a really fun conversation. We, we talk about her music, obviously. Also talk about what it's like to be a woman in the music scene here in Rochester and, and elsewhere. And we also talk about Donald Trump a little bit. So yeah, it's uh, always interesting when his, his name comes up. But yeah, that's, that's about it. In a minute, I'm going to let you hear the interview. And yeah, if you haven't yet, I say this every episode, but please check out the other shows on the podcast, The Pennsylvania Network. There's one called Grumpkins and Sharks that is all about Game of Thrones. So if that's something you're into, check it out. I'm not really into Game of Thrones, so I don't really... It doesn't really sound like any... doesn't make any sense to me. The, the show, that is. But if that's something you're into, I'm sure that it will make sense to you. I'm rambling at this point, so I'm just going to... Let you hear the interview with Mackenzie, and I will talk to you more after that's over. What's up, world? And I'm going to move <laughs> this maybe. closer, and I'm going to say talk louder, because oh, this is gosh. like a real, yeah. like... How loud should I talk? Is this good? That'll or like... be good. Yeah. Okay. I feel my, like I'm going to yell. My throat is Excuse all Excuse my raspy scratchy. Rochester voice. I went to see Free Throw at the Bug Jar. Oh, the for the emo music. And I wanted to go. I and I yelled I along with them, and that was like a good bill, though. Like California cousins, Daily Daisy Head, yeah, yeah. and Young and Heartless. We're from Harrisburg, which is like shit my area, Earth, and I didn't even know who they <laughs> were, but they were. Should cool. I not swear? Is this like no? You can totally swear. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, shit. No, so that would have been mad cool. I can't remember what I was doing. Probably nothing important. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was rad. Like it was a really good turnout for a. Whatever it was, Wednesday night. Wednesday in night, Bug Jar Show in Snow Apocalypse. Yeah. So, how did you first like get into like punk or underground music? Like, punk is an umbrella term for like all like underground music. Um, uh, well, to be honest, I don't really listen to too much punk. But how did I get involved in like the underground scene? Yeah. And when, when I say punk, I mean like. <laughs> Like, really anything. broad, like, anything that's kind of underground. Okay. Um, like, that, the punk in that sense, not necessarily I'm just hold this. I'm punk just in a hold genre it. I keep sense. wanting to put it down. I'm just going to hold it. Sorry. Coffee cup. Coffee full, a mug full of coffee, in case anyone was wondering. Just like, anyway, so, I think, what was my first experience? I think probably my first experience of, like, underground like or at least like not like mainstream i'd say it's probably like going to the meat grinder i remember like jack was like oh you totally gotta check out this place that i went to and it's like out of this world nothing you've ever experienced and it's gonna be great there's all these cool people there so naturally i'm like my young curious 15, 16 year old mind was like, oh, I'll check this out. Mom and dad wouldn't approve. Hell yeah, let's go. <laughs> What's this place called? The fucking meat grinder? I don't know, but like, alright, alright. And like, oh my gosh, it was crazy. Like, I just remember being immersed in like this environment that I was totally not used to, but that just like, I don't know, that just made me want to like dive in even more. And like, yeah, Jack definitely got me involved in it and he was in a punk band and this is, this is jack from currently of the fever tones. currently currently of the fever tones he had gone through many many names at the time he played as such reckless children what was the other thing that he did it was like him and matthias galley also had like a very slight little thing that they did. I can't remember. What was it called? It was Isn't like a, Johnny a, Johnny Punk and like the Tylenol Junkie or something. Was that oh, shit. Was that before Such Reckless Children? It might have been. Okay. It might have been what they did beforehand and then they like got a bassist and a drummer and like just started to like 
really play like this like fast paced like punk yeah. music and I was like I don't get it but like I'll support you guys because I didn't know anything I didn't I've never heard that band name before oh so. my god yeah I can't I can't remember if it was Johnny Punk and the Tylenol Junkie but Matthias was definitely that he also went by Boots at one point stupid I love him <laughs> I'm learning new things. This oh is my great. god! This is why, like, you're like the first. Oh, person and the ugly baby. He was also like acoustic, anti folk. The ugly yeah, baby. I remember that. And uh, what was the other? Now we're jumping around. I know. You had, like a ska band for a minute. No collar. No collar. Oh my god! Yes, yes. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god! Talk about genre switch. That was back. Back when Dublin Underground was still, like, the ska thing, and yeah. you'd go to Mrs. Scanato. That was also, I don't know, maybe ska was what got me into punk, honestly. Because, like, my brothers, or, like, my older brother would listen to, like, a lot of ska, and I was like, oh, this is kind of, like, fast, I don't know. Like, at the time, I wasn't listening to anything remotely, even, like, in the rock genre, even, like, mm. that umbrella term, and I was like, oh, ska, and then I was like, oh, I want to get into, like, ska punk, and then it was, like, more, like, oh, now, like, folk punk and anti-folk, and yeah. that's really what I mostly gravitated towards was definitely, like, the more acoustic side to punk, mm. if nothing else, just, like, the, I'm gonna yell with an acoustic guitar, and it doesn't have to make sense, because, yeah, and, like, that's what I liked a lot, like, uh, the creator of the universe. If you consider that, if you consider him punk, not at all, he's just an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Griffin, if you hear this, sorry. <laughs> um, now, what were, who were the first, what was the first show you went to at the Meat Grinder? Do you remember? Oh, my God. <sighs> Dude, I don't even know. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to think of, like, oh, my God. <laughs> Probably some dirty needle show, honestly. <laughs> Probably and being like, oh, those are cool people. But like, uh, who else played? What was that one? Vi Virulent Rot? Virulent or Rot. Vir 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 yeah, sure. Eric that Lundy they and... were so good. Yeah, <laughs> I liked them a lot actually. That kept me going for a while. I remember photographing that stupid ass band all the time. <laughs> and like, uh, what else? But I don't know, that was just, it was so unreal. And then you guys painted it, and I was pissed. <laughs> well, the story there is we didn't paint it, the uh, the landlords painted it. Oh, that was horrible. It I just loved the... Uh, the wood panels. The on allure the, yeah. of the, the meat grinder. Good times. And then the strobe light, occasionally breaking everything. <laughs> yeah. That, like, water closet, fucking toilet room. Weird. It was, it was a pretty gross place. But it was amazing, and I, like, fucking long live the meat grinder. <laughs> that was really, like, what made me want to play music. I think the meat grinder was where I played my first show, officially. Oh, cool. Aside from, like, Boulder Coffee and playing at, like, open mics there, I think the meat grinder was honestly, like, where I got, like, my start as Sunset Arms mm -hmm. way back in the day. Then I found out that that was already a thing, so I couldn't use that name. Now, so... When you first played, I know you always, even now when I've seen you play recently, you play a lot of covers as well, but was that, had you just started writing songs around that period of time, or? Around, like, like the Meat Grinder days, definitely. Mm. I feel like, oh my gosh, I was, like, so young, and I was like, I'm gonna, like, channel all of this angst and anguish into, like, these, like, super shitty recordings, and, like, I don't know, people loved it. Like, I was like, well, I don't know if they loved it. I'd like to think so. But, like, ask me that question again. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> okay. Uh, what was the question? <laughs> uh, I was just asking about, you know, songwriting and when you started. Oh, I think I, I probably started writing sometime around there, around that time. Mm. I started playing guitar when I was 15. Probably, I think I played my first official show when I was, like, 17? And they were, like, it was the dumbest set, but it was, like, three originals and, like, four covers or something. But, like, I don't know. It's a good it's a good way to start, and, like, I feel like it also helped me kind of, like, develop, like, my own voice. Just because I could, like, find musicians that I really liked and, like, you know, not so much piggyback off of it, but, like, get inspired to, like, try, like, a different chord progression or, like, yeah. change, like, the tone of your voice or, like... Just, like, fuck around with your instrument and stuff. Yeah. Who who were your... 
who was influencing you as far as like those early first couple songs you were writing? <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, most likely unrequited love. <laughs> and uh but as far as like musical uh influences, I, at the time I was listening to like a lot of Bright Eyes, a lot of Connor Oberst. I think a lot of City and Color too at the mm. time. Just like a lot of um sad acoustic yeah, music. Yeah, sad acoustic music. And it just really resonated with me at the time. Like, now I feel like I want to play more electric music, but it's, like, at the time, it's just, like, just the tones of, like, how you could really convey the almost, like, just dark emotions that, like, I was just feeling at the time of, you know, being a lost teenager, whatever that means. And, like, it was just a way to almost, like, get through it, I guess. I mean, but, yeah, those dudes rule. They're, and I'm glad they're still making music. City and Color sucks now, but kudos to my boy Connor. Didn't he, didn't he put out a he put out an album with uh, with Pink or something, right? Yeah, I didn't listen to it. I was afraid to. I was yeah, like, I, no, don't let this ruin it for me. I, I kind of stopped caring about about mm -hmm. his music a long time ago. And I guess Alexis on Fire is a thing again. They are. Yeah, yeah, they're <laughs> playing, and I think maybe touring and. No, okay, I met him for once. That. And he was really nice. Yeah, he was, seems like a cool dude. It was like Alexis on Fire was playing Warp Tour and oh, like Warp Tour. ran into him. Yeah, <laughs> another time. Another time. Oh, I miss Warp Tour. No, I don't. <laughs> so what's uh? I'm trying to think. Um, what uh? So you you started playing at uh, the Meat Grinder. Where else did you start playing shows and? Um, where you else did I play? Your, you spread your wings further than just that <laughs> little creepy basement. A little, my favorite little shithole. Um, after that, where did I play? Oh my goodness. I played a lot of, like, little open mics at, uh, Boulder Coffee for a while. Just because, like, I really liked the whole, like, DIY feel, and I really yeah. felt like I liked it, too. And then afterwards, of course, I uh, I think I've played at the Vineyard... Well, in an immense amount of times. I think I, I've just lost count. I don't keep count anymore. But I played so many shows there. The Flying Squirrel. Is that still active? Is it... It's still there. Oh, it's still I haven't there. heard about a show there in a long time. Mm. Part of me wants to, like, book a show there. Like, but do you like one of those, like, like, like an all-day thing? <laughs> a fest. With, you know, bands on either side of the room going back and forth because those were super fun. Ooh, I do like those. But, but just like do that once, like as a fest. But as far as regular shows, it doesn't seem like anybody's interested in going there anymore. It's yeah. kind of out there. It like fell off the map a little bit. I'm supposed to go there for like some music video though. They need people in the crowd. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Taylor invited me to it or something. I don't know, but that's cool. I played... I mean, there's also, like, the Bug Jar. There is another house venue. The Black Lodge. Or before yeah. that, Satan's Butthole. And that was a really cool show. Unfortunately, the cave... Or the floor caved in. Was that... Did you play the I did. Show? I did. But tell that story, because I was out of town. I've heard it, but... Tell it for the listeners who may not so, know. There was this house venue, house show place, Satan's butthole, whatever. It was like this kid's living room, and it was like a, probably like a five band bill, like very standard, and like it was cool, but it's like there was so many people there. There was just like... There must have been at least maybe, like... I mean, it sounds like a small number now, but it's like... There must have been, like, 40 people in this dude's living and this, room. this was a tiny, tiny Yeah, tiny like, a very small place. Smaller than the meat grinder. Oh, my gosh. Like, probably, like, maybe, like, half the size of, like, that back room, maybe. Mm -hmm. And, like, there's just, like, so many people, like, bobbing their heads and, like, dancing around that, like... The second that, like, I think Lemuria played, like, one or two songs on the first floor, when eventually, like, the floor just started to, like, buckle underneath everyone, yeah. and they were like, should we keep playing? And it's like, they eventually moved down to the basement, which was, like, 
it was so intimate and like it was dark they had like very little lights like i really liked those like small intimate shows granted they were like loud but like yeah it was so intimate just to like be in such a small area with like that amount of people yeah Oh. Lemire is like a big deal around here, being from Buffalo and being a bigger band. So. So. And they're like doing it. Yeah. They're so big. I love them. <laughs> Did you put in. I think. Yeah, we played there. We played a show there together. Because you played with. Mm. Uh, Rayma played. Yes. And I can't remember who else was on that show, but. Neither do I. Wow, like, but yeah, I do remember that. It was that. like a bunch of more amends played. Oh, yes. And, uh, yes. Wow. Well, it, That's a name I haven't heard in a minute. I know. I, I miss that band. <laughs> oh, my God. They were cool dude for sure. And uh, Threads, I think. And then some other emo band from where Threads is from or something like that from Maryland or something. Those Good are times. Those are super fun shows when it's like different genres, you know, in a house. I feel like I'm always playing with, like, different genres, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's pretty much impossible to have an acoustic, an all-acoustic show, or at least I wouldn't want to go to an all-acoustic show. So it's, like, it's always cool that I can be, like, this little, like, filler and just, like, hop on these bills mm-hmm. with, like, different genres. But I also love that about Rochester, that you have the ability to just, like, play with so many different bands and, like, so yeah. many different styles of music. And it's like you just meet these like incredible musicians just by like leaving your house for once. <laughs> yeah, there's so much diversity in the scene here. It's it's pretty exciting. Uh, um, I'm stoked for Rochester's future. Some people don't like it here, but it's like we've got a lot to offer, especially like musically. It could be better. I'm not gonna not knock it, but like grateful. <laughs> yeah, like I think there's a lot of really diverse bands and I mean uh, Glennie and I were talking yesterday about the uh, the noisy article that that Alex Jones wrote uh, incredible and, uh, article just just such a wide range of awesome heavy bands and then even beyond that there's so many like cool indie rock bands here in Rochester and bands that you know Tim Avery's band Secret Pizza <laughs> is <laughs> so good and he'll Amazing. Be on, he'll be on the show at some point. You soon. better be. Oh my gosh. Tim, if you're listening, you're next <laughs> <laughs> to the guillotine. Oh my gosh. Uh, but that's like, uh, it just makes me so happy that like there really are just like so many different, uh, we're, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Or me. Who knows? Maybe it's just me talking to myself. That's kind of how I feel, but um, I don't know. I just feel, like, so grateful to be able to, like, have a scene where it's, like, you can listen to, like, like, what was it? I don't know. I, the last show I went to was on Sunday with uh, Gutters, Joe Clark, Keep, and Drews, and it's, like, it was so cool that, like, it, I feel like, you know, maybe, like, not even, like, Two years ago, you would never find, like, a bill like that, like, around Rochester. If it it was, I didn't know about it, and Mm -hmm. that might have been my own ignorance. But, like, I'm so glad that, like, I feel like we're able to get past pop punk as a scene. Like, fucking thank God. I'm so over all these pop punk bands that are just, like, coming around. It's like, ah, like, hearing, like, people that I know, like, making this, like, noise music or just, like, doing their own thing that is different incredible and like yeah. ah, truly blessed <laughs> truly hashtag blessed. blessed hashtag blessed <laughs> uh. so you've been playing under the name rose hip for a little while um oh, yeah. and i i actually i know you're saying you're not doing that much anymore or not, not playing much. under that name anymore so what's what's the story with with that oh rose hip so rose hip uh originally began as sunset arms and then Due to realizing that that's the place where Hey Arnold grew up, uh, can't really uh, use that as a name. So I switched it to Rosehip, 
uh, because at the time I was, like, in college, and I was, like, a poor college student, so, like, my breakfast would be, like, a cup of coffee, and then I would go back to the coffee shop later in the day and have, like, a rosehip tea, mm -hmm. and I was just, like, after a while of just ordering it and, like, realizing that I wanted to just, like, change my name, or at least, like, change, like, the name of what I was, like, making my project under, and mm -hmm. in doing so, I felt like the project also changed, like, even when I changed the name, but... It was just something that was, like, this constant in my life, and it's, I don't know. So I named it that, and it was a good run, honestly. Like, for me, that project was almost so therapeutic in a way. It was, like, just a way for me to really, like, I don't know, pretty much be a dick to all the people who wronged me <laughs> on stage in front of people that would clap. <laughs> um, and I really enjoyed it, and I had, like, so many opportunities to just, like, meet amazing musicians and just, like, connect with so many people through that project that, like, I'll, I'll always be thankful for that experience by doing that. But I, the reason I really just don't want to, like, play under, like, Rosehip anymore is that, like, I really just want to explore more electric, honestly, mm. and... It, there's no point in bringing the name over because it's going to be a completely separate entity or project. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just going to be something completely different from Rosehip. And it's like, I don't want to also, like, take that away from, like, what that project was and, like, what it meant to me and what it might have meant to other people. Mm -hmm. It's like, I remember one day I was walking down the street and someone was like, hey, Rosehip. And I, I remember <laughs> thinking, like... That was so weird that, like, this person only knows me by, like, this name. And, like, I don't know. Like, I wouldn't want to take it away, like, from the project, myself, or, like, the people that, like, enjoyed that music. So, but I, I've i outgrown it as an individual is really what it is. It's more like an out, like, completely outgrown. And I don't know. Like, it's it's not like it's gone forever. Who's to say, like, I don't know. Maybe, like one or two songs here or there. Nothing, nothing solid in the future. Yeah, so but do, you have, do you have plans for this next band? Um, do you have members, or is it just like, <laughs> just what you want to do next that hasn't, hasn't happened yet? So, uh, there's nothing, nothing really official, uh, mostly due to my tardiness and my uh, just being very busy with other important life matters. So it's kind of at a standstill right now. I've written music for it, and it's definitely something that I've explored and I want to explore with mm. other people, but it's more like an idea right now. It's more a, a concept, really. We'll see, like, it, it'll be an interesting project, simply because of the state of, or rather the point of life that I'm at yeah. right now. It's just like, it's going to be an interesting experience, most definitely. Cool. Got to get a... A Dan Electro guitar. <laughs> <laughs> so is that... Did you have anything else going on in your life creatively um, outside of uh, what you're working on for this upcoming musical project? Well, I'm in a tabletop RPG game. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> no, but I, I've been working more on like my artwork, honestly, and just trying to like get out and photograph more. Um, just, like, aside from, like, music in general, it's just, like, that was really, like, I always felt like music was always, like, my, like, my hobby, really, but it was, like, art and just, like, I got something on my sock, I'm sorry, I keep fucking with it, <laughs> but, like, art was more, like, a passion, and it was something that, like, really, like, drove me and, like, really needs to be this, like, <laughs> light of, like, guidance in my life at the current point in time but yeah I don't know. adam what are you up to musically what, what are you doing man i don't have anything currently happening as far as a, a project um i want there to be but it, it just isn't happening right now right now i'm just i'm podcasting yeah which is i mean it's not really i'm just having conversations and sharing them with people it's not a, a super creative outlet but i'm hey you know i'm, I'm putting content out into the world so yeah in and a certain that's what's way, most it is important. a sort of really cool, interesting content that you know people can listen to if they want to. I, I, I really just want to document stuff from the scene because I think, as we were saying earlier, I think there's a lot of really cool. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, so far we've only explored kind of the music aspect, and that's mostly because that's my thing. 
but I definitely want to talk to some other people who um, are more you know, visual artists or, or uh, things like that. I'm gonna hella visual artists. Talking about all the galleries. Oh, I should have seen Montage of Heck at the Memorial Art Gallery yesterday. Was I, it yesterday? It was yeah. yesterday because it was my uh. birthday, and I was prop like thinking about going, but I ended up having dinner with friends, and ah, that was well, that's nice though, and that was really cool. And like I'd seen Montage of Heck, same. Like, so I feel like I saw it the day it came out. I actually waited a little while, oh, and I wait. yeah, it was it was great. <laughs> It was incredible. Oh, this is almost the same as the geotag on Snapchat. Nice. Just a little tidbit for everyone. That's, that's Caleb's mug. I don't know where he got it. Oh, no, shout nice outs to Caleb. Good mug. You got a good mug. It's the Rochester one. I'm going to burp. Wait for it. <clears throat> nice. Have you seen uh, <laughs> Soaked in Bleach yet? No. Every, I've been... I've actually been here something about this. Is that older or newer? It's a, it's a new one. It's kind of brings up a lot of the same points that were brought up in that Kurt and Courtney one. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I still, like, I watched it. It presents some interesting points. I still don't think that Courtney killed Kurt. Oh my god. I don't think so either. But it, I mean, it was, it I was mean, an interesting watch. What is the take on it? Like, like, what are the, I guess, what is the side? Like, what is the evidence? You'll have to watch it and find <sighs> out. God. But it was, you know, it was it was interesting nonetheless. It, he's such a fascinating uh, artist, human being. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's making me sad just thinking about all these artists that have just passed recently. Yeah, it's Alan been, Rickman yesterday or the day before. To, Alan Rickman, David Bowie, we're losing them. Yeah, Alan Rickman died on my birthday trying to trying to bum oh, everybody God. out and take the attention off me. Sure. Come on, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Not cool, man. Not cool. Fuck cancer. I'll say that right now. Fuck cancer. But, like, I saw this uh, stupid-ass meme the other day. I was like, how both David Bowie and Alan Rickman have died at the age of 69. And then the next picture was, like, a picture of Donald Trump's birthday, and he's also 69. I saw that as like, well. <laughs> man looking at watch, waiting. Like, <laughs> sorry, Internet. I'm trying to... Visually give you the visual of the stupid meme. Visually do give you the visual. <laughs> do, do you have strong feelings about Donald Trump? Oh, oh, do I have strong feelings about Donald Trump? Why, uh, why, yes I do, as a, as a woman as well as a minority-ish, yeah. <laughs> I've got a lot of qualms with Mr. Trump. Well, Yo, can, can I get another cup of here. coffee, honestly? Yeah. Like, cause now you've, uh... Now that you were getting another glass, I was like, oh, yes, just bring the, exactly, just bring the whole pot of coffee. Want some more creamer in there, too? I'm Heck assuming. yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, how do you think... Donald Trump is a piece of shit, and he's a chump for sure. He's a fucking chump. How do people, oh, I watched, uh... His, uh, I gotta show you this. Uh, I watched, uh, the Donald Trump, like, put, like, a link to this so that everyone can watch and see how lame this person is. And I actually haven't seen this yet. I've seen people post it, but I haven't, like, watched it because... Oh, my gosh. What is it? It's just gonna make me mad. <laughs> this is the, what was it called? Like, the Trump theme song or something? Freedom something. Oh, here, here it is. Freedom Kids. Amazing. Yeah. It's really, it, it really makes me sad for America when I watch this. Just to see that, like, th there's, like, people that are actually clapping for this and, like... And take it seriously. Yeah. It's, it's really sad. Please, God, don't ever let him. At, at God, please do not let Donald Trump become president. Show the actual song. Oh, shit. I need to find the real version. Hold on. Hold on. Freedom Kids. USA! USA! Hold on, wait. Oh, here we go. 
Unreal. <laughs> Doesn't this just make you lose faith in humanity? Oh, Ugh, don't okay. Have any words. Okay. Okay. Enough. I'm enough. But yeah. So so you get the gist. If you want to watch the full thing, I, I can put a link. Yeah. In the, yeah. In the you can you can help yourself in that department. But it's like, uh, come on. Like he he has nothing positive to say. There's nothing that. <gasps> well, he's, he's playing off. He's playing off of fear. Yeah, which is like horrible. And it's sad that that's the state that that we're in, that there's people who are clinging to that, and... And it's like, it, they're clinging to it because it, it feels natural, so it's like, it's so hard. It's like, dude, just, like, understand that, like, you're so fucked up, and, like, everything you say is, like, so uh, demeaning, and, like, you want to build a wall to, like, keep out immigrants? Like, you're, you're joking, right? Or, like, uh, like... Everything that comes out of his mouth is, like, garbage. Like, it, it's not even good. Honestly, I don't know if there's, like, any good 2016 presidential candidate. Like, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really on the fence about everyone, honestly. It's like, I like Bernie, but I'm on the fence about him. Yeah, I, I've kind of lost faith in the system altogether, yeah. and, like... But it's like I can't not vote. That's like the worst thing to do. So it's like uh, I don't I don't know how I'm, much I don't know how much of a difference it makes either way in the in the like the national like presidential election. I, I I'm know. totally guilty. But if nothing of not, else, even even if it doesn't matter, at least if I do vote, that will be one the, more vote against Donald Trump because yeah. he does not have my vote. <laughs> now, kind of bringing it bringing it back to like the music scene and in you, obviously you're a woman. And, and a minority. So, like, how how is that? Has that at all impacted my experience? Your experience within the music scene. Um, and I'm I'm honestly like uh, we were talking. Yes, like <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, a thousand times yes. I don't know. I feel like, especially as like a girl in the scene, like I feel like anytime I go out to a show, like. Everyone thinks, like, oh, you're just there to, like, hook up with the guy. Like, you don't actually like this kind of music. Like, girls don't like music like this. Like, oh, you're so lame. Like, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know what? You, you're you just so self-righteous. Like, no, that's not it at all. It's like, you can relax and, like, I'm just a human being. I want to be treated as such. Like, it's no different. But, like, that part is annoying, or, like, it's honestly just mostly prominent in, like, the hardcore scene, which has been talked about, and, like, it's a problem that needs to be addressed, that mm -hmm. it's just very sexist at most hardcore shows. Not all, not all, and, like, a lot of, like, there's a lot of good dudes, and, like, you know, but, <laughs> not, but, the, let me rephrase what I'm trying to say, but it's, like, um... There's definitely, like, parts of me where it's, like, I, I feel uncomfortable going to some shows or, like, like I shouldn't, like, stand in, like, a certain spot or I shouldn't act this way, but it's, like, I, at least now I've reached a point as to where I'm, like, at least I can finally be, like, I don't give a fuck, I'm gonna enjoy myself at this mm. show. But, like, for a while, it felt like I couldn't. Like, I felt like I couldn't just, like, relax. It's, like, you're always, like, keeping your, like, guard up or, like whatever, but, I mean, it, it's, I feel like, at least, like, we're moving in a positive direction with it, at least more towards, like, equality in it, and I mean, I'm a minority in, in a sense that, like, I'm half black, but I don't exactly really, like, am not, like, you know, whatever, but, so I don't really feel like I've really experienced any injustices there. But, mm -hmm. like, as a woman, definitely. It's, like, it, nothing you do is, like, just because you want to. It's, like, it, there's always, like, people think that there's, like, this ulterior motive for, like, 
or ulterior motive. Words are hard today. Oh my god. It's like everyone thinks you have this like hidden agenda every time you go out to like a show. Mm -hmm. Like and and it shouldn't be that way. Like it shouldn't be that like you can't like talk to like people without them expecting something of you. Like it's mm -hmm. fucked up. And it's not like that for any other, like, guys talking to guys, but it's, like, the second that, like, a girl wants to, like, talk to a guy and just be, like, even, like, to just be, like, hey, man, cool set. They're, like, okay, get out of here. You're just, like, a groupie. And it's, like, wow, I really wanted to, like, talk to you about something that mattered. Yes. And you're just, like, totally assuming. And, like, that part is fucked up. But, like, I don't know. What are you going to do? I mean, I just wish to, like be myself, honestly, like, at a mm -hmm. show and just be able to, like, say whatever I want or, like, do whatever. Well, as far as, like, you, you got, you started coming to shows when you were, you know, 15, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. My first show ever was in seventh grade. That was a great show. Wow. Oh, my God. So, I mean, <laughs> so I'm assuming there's definitely, like, especially as, I mean, it's at any age that's, like, like, messed up and, like, not something you want to deal with. But especially, like, if you're, like, 15, 16 coming to a show, oh, there's, yeah. like, creepy dudes in their 20s. You know. Protect underage girls from t guys in their fucking 20s. Pigs, all of them. But I remember that. Uh, I just turned 29, <laughs> so I'm almost... I'm almost Woo! <laughs> almost dirty 30! <laughs> Kramer coming in clutch. Nah, Kramer was always cool for anyone, at least in my opinion. I always felt safe around Adam. Even though he was significantly older than me. I'm a baby. I was always a little baby. Yeah. But, um, you know, yeah, I'm not going to name drop, obviously, but, like, you know, there, there are some notable people that I think are uh, common, common talk amongst people to, you know, step a little further away from this person, you know, mm. just for, like, comfort. But I, I feel like... It's so, it's so, like, rampant for, like, men to just feel like women are just, like, these, like, objects that they can, like, use, like, at any age, and, like, it's just, it's just fucked up, like, I don't know, it's like, I think about myself in that situation, and it's like, why would I want to go for, like, someone that's younger than me, or at least, like, that much younger than me, like, that's how I think about it in my mm -hmm. head, just because you're at completely different maturity levels. It's like, I'm not going to be able to bring you out to bars. We're not going to be able to do... Well, not that that's important, that you totally shouldn't base your relationship on whether or not you can go to bars. But it's like you're at two different stages in life. And, like, that's mm -hmm. okay. But, you know, like... Don't fucking be a dick. Don't fucking be a rapist. I don't know. Like, just... Don't. Like, how do you not have that much self-control? <laughs> Don't let me get started. Ugh, I'm not gonna get started. <laughs> no, I, I wanted to. I wanted to talk about that specifically because I mean, there is. Uh, I mean, it's God, it's sweaty. such a. But anyway, yeah. yeah like I wanted to. I, I specifically wanted to like talk about issues about women in the music scene Ugh. because I think it's important. It needs to be talked about, and I think so. I don't know if I'm personally the best person to talk about it, but it is definitely something that I really, I personally feel like it just needs to be addressed. Just because I don't know, you you should want to feel safe at shows, and like yeah. it should be like a really welcoming place for everyone, regardless of like your age, gender, sexual orientation. You you should be able to experience music. Without having to worry about shit like that. Like, yeah. that's why you listen to music. To escape whatever bullshit you're dealing with. You shouldn't have to, like, be afraid to go to a show because X, Y, or Z. Like, it, it's fucked up. Yeah. And, I don't... <sighs> it's... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's hard for a lot of men to unlearn their hyper-masculinity, I think. Yeah, I mean it's it's I mean it's kind of an institu it's institutionalized in the same way that racism is institutionalized and you, you don't you don't think you are these things but you you still like when you take a step back you realize oh you're not trying to be but in in some ways it is like it's just hardwired into the way that we think as a society and mm -hmm. um you know I, I, we're all fucked up honestly society has us all fucked up yeah. It's not just, like... I feel like I, I was having this conversation, I think, uh, yesterday at dinner with someone. 
and, like, just, like, talking about how, like, society is just, like, fucked you up or, like, whatever your experiences were as, like, a child or, like, what your family life was like, that you can, like, form these, like, false ideations of, like, what is actually reality, like, or, mm-hmm. like, what what's actually going on. And it, it's hard, almost, just because you've... It, it'd be, like, if you're, like, having to be told to, like, do something completely the opposite of what you're used to. So, like, I... <sighs> I don't know. I guess in that sense, I'm empathetic, but I'm not because I never had to learn that. It was just always something that was came natural to me. Like I don't know, everyone's a human. (laughs) I don't know. Yeah, but for a lot of people, it's it's a struggle and like. Well, I think that's why it's important (laughs) that I talk about it with you and with with anybody else because it's like because that is like what is like how we're trained as dudes. And so I think we need to talk about it so it's always, like, we're always aware of our male privilege. Yeah. Uh, because... Get it, that extra 75 cents per hour. <laughs> Eat it! <laughs> but, yeah, well, I think that's... I mean, that we kind of hit all the main things that I wanted to, to hit on. Um, did you want to... If you want to play a song for yeah. whoever's listening, you can do that. And Let's take a vote. Guitar, ukulele, world... I don't know. Okay, it's, it's, I guess. Uh, I guess this is kind of a one-way <laughs> thing at the moment. So, uh, I don't know. Uh, so I guess this isn't even in tune. So I don't know if this is the best idea. We're gonna try. Uh, we can tune it. I did bring a tuner. Um, tuna. Tuna. Oh. I don't know if I'm gonna be too close to the microphone, but I think uh, it'll be. I think it'll be good. All right. The this? I love pesto, pasta, and poutine. <laughs> all right. Won't be a super long episode, so you can play more music. Use it as fillers and background music. I just wish that I had like more interesting things to say. No, it's cool. <laughs> I mean, I think honestly, like I'm cool with this being a shorter episode. Like maybe it'll be a nice break for the listeners yeah. after listening to long, I, in-depth interviews. Yeah, I only spew like you know, it's only like 75 percent bullshit. So. <laughs> Oh, 
Okay. Actually, I'm gonna move this closer because it's the uke's pretty quiet. I'm gonna set it on your knee. Cool. the person that I wrote this song for, but I love this song, and it really bums me out. You can uh, check it out on uh, rosehip.bandcamp.com. <laughs> there it is. There's the, the plug. There's the plug! Adam Kramer is the plug. A lot of appreciation for the P.O.D. CD I'm looking at. It's just Caleb's. It's all, mostly Caleb's stuff up here. I keep my, I keep my secrets hidden in there. because I've been drinking coffee and no water. Leave me alone! Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Mackenzie. As she said, you can find her on Bandcamp, rosehip.bandcamp.com. That's where you can find some more of her music. And uh, whenever she gets this new project off the grounds, I will make sure I uh, put a link to that on the Facebook page for So I've Been Sold. 
Now, next week, I'm going to talk to Matt Green. He's the vocalist of New Heart, which is a hardcore band from Indianapolis, as well as the bassist in a band called The Jig. And he and I um, kind of talk about the state of hardcore right now and uh, kind of talk about some of the things that Mackenzie and I touched on as far as women in the hardcore scene and, and whatnot. So, yeah, make sure you check out next week's episode. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, okay, so last week I had John on the show, as as some of you probably know, because a lot of you listen to it. And there was something I wanted to play on John's show, but that episode was really long, so I didn't really get the opportunity to. So I'm going to play, to close out today's episode, I'm going to play a song that is a hidden track on Endangered Youth's album, Furtherance. We took some of... Uh, Matt Oyer, who produced our record, took some of uh, John's less than stellar vocal tracks from recording that album and made this really beautiful song that is, uh, I guess, I guess we could, it, we never gave it a title because it's a hidden track, but I guess we could call it So I've Been Told Part 2. Um, if you haven't figured that out already, So I've Been Told was the name of an endangered youth song, which is my old band, but whatever but yeah so i've been told part two i <laughs> i hope you all enjoy it Come 